Hello? Is this the right line account for Clara Hartford? Yes, can I help you? Nice to meet you. My name's Judy. I've heard so much about you from Sam. You're Sam's wife, right? Uh, yes, Sam is my husband. But who are you? Are you one of Sam's employees? Employee? <laughs> LMAO, no. I'm his girlfriend. His girlfriend? You know you're dealing with a married man, don't you? What you are is typically called a mistress, not a girlfriend. Lol, you've got it all wrong. I'm not Sam's mistress. I'm his true love. I see. So, what can I do for you, Miss Sam's true love? Lol, isn't it obvious? I want you to break up with him. Give him a divorce, okay? You're just getting in our way. Excuse me? How am I getting in your way? Uh, duh. I can't marry Sam until you divorce him, you dried up old hag. You're getting in the way of our love. Get it now? LOL. Hmm. Yes, it's all very clear now. Oh, and by the way, I'm pregnant, and Sam's the father. Is that so? I'm in my sixth month. You wouldn't want this baby to grow up in a fatherless home, would you? Wouldn't that be sad? So hurry up and give him a divorce, lol. A rich and powerful CEO like Sam deserves a young and beautiful wife like me. Not an old hag like you. Alright, I've heard your piece. If you're really pregnant, I suppose there's only one thing to do. I'll go and have a talk with Sam. Could you wait for just a moment? Sure, whatever. But be quick, okay? Sam, I just got a message from a girl named Judy. She says she's pregnant with your baby. Wait, what? Hold on. Oh, boy. I saw her profile picture. She seems quite young. How old is she, Sam? Uh, um, 23, I think. She's more than 20 years younger than you? You're old enough to be her father. Aren't you a lucky man? I believe I remember you telling me you'd never do this again. Well, uh, <laughs> you see, um, it's like this. I told you, didn't I? If you ever cheated on me again, we'd be through. Hey, wait, Clara. I'm really, really sorry. I mean it this time. Please don't do this. Oh, yes, you're in quite a predicament, aren't you? If the CEO of a company were having an affair with a girl 20 years his junior, that might harm the company's image, wouldn't it? I think the board of directors might like to hear more about this. No, wait, please! Clara, listen! I totally get it, you're right. But please don't divorce me. What are you planning to do about that girl, Sam? She's already six months pregnant! The baby will be born soon! Yeah, about that. I was thinking I could pay her child support and make her sign an NDA. That'd solve all our problems, wouldn't it? That wouldn't solve anything. Oh, I'm getting tired. She's pregnant, Sam. You need to take responsibility. Divorce me and marry her. No, Clara, please! Hover, I can make this a clean and easy divorce with just one condition. You can? The main issue is your affair being uncovered, isn't it? I'll come up with a good reason to have an amicable divorce. All you need to do is marry Judy before the child is born. I won't ask for any punitive damages or alimony. 
Just give me my share of our assets. Are you sure? Is that really all you want? What's in it for you? What's in it for me? Getting rid of my lying, cheating husband, for starters. I don't feel like dealing with any more messages from your mistress. Our kids are all already adults, so there's really nothing keeping us together at all now. We'll each take what's ours and part ways. Really? You're okay with that? Oh, hey, what's the one condition? What do you want me to do? The one condition is this. Don't have any contact with your mistress until the divorce is finalized. That's really all you want from me? If you want to hide your affair, it's best to leave as little evidence as possible, right? You can do what you wish with her after the divorce. So, what do you say? Do you agree to my terms? Yes, of course! Anything to keep my affair from getting out. Clara, I'm really sorry about everything. I hurt you a lot, I know, but... Hey, you're free now, so go and be happy without me. Yes, indeed. Free as a bird. I'll contact my lawyer and have him drop the divorce papers. I'll send them to you after I sign them. Got it. Hello, Judy. Ugh, finally. What took you so long? So when are you getting divorced? Let me ask you something first. Do you understand that what you were participating in was adultery? You were in a romantic relationship with a married man. <laughs> of course I know that, but can you really blame me? I just happened to fall in love with someone married to someone else. That's not the issue. Your adultery has led to me divorcing my husband. You're going to take responsibility for your part. What do you mean? Do you want money or something? You're a clever little thing, aren't you? You're aware that legally I'm entitled to receive damages from you. I want you to pay for what you've done. Oh, okay. Well, how about 60,000? 60, 60,000? My, that is a big number. I have no idea how much people typically pay. But considering your situation, with you being a dried-up old hag about to get thrown away by her husband, I figured it's the least I could do for you, LMAO. Sure, I'll pay you 60000 So divorce him already, okay? My, oh my, aren't you a generous little girl. I want to get this over with as soon as possible, too. But are you sure you can pay $60,000? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Sam's the CEO, isn't he? What's 60000 to a guy like him? He loves me enough to pay 60000 for me. How lovely. Well, if that's what you're willing to pay, I'll accept your offer. You'll pay it in a lump sum, won't you? I'd rather not have the payments drag out over several years. Yeah, that would suck. <laughs> After we get married, I never want you to contact us again. Alright, then it's settled. A lump sum payment of $60,000. I'll have my lawyer drop an agreement. Send it back as soon as you sign it. Once I get that, I'll divorce him right away. Fine, I'll sign it as soon as I can. So hurry up and divorce him. My pleasure. The agreement came in the mail yesterday, so I just went to the courthouse to finalize the divorce. As of today, we are officially no longer married. Yes! It's about time! Now I can live with my rich husband in his huge mansion! Congratulations. I wish you both the best. Thanks a bunch. But like, what are you gonna do now? Now you're just an old woman who got thrown away by her husband. <laughs> you better make that 60,000 last. 
<laughs> oh, speaking of which, I had a question for you. Do you mind? Ugh, another question? Sure, fine. You must be so lonely, getting divorced at your age, LMAO. So ask away, lonely old lady. How nice of you to spare some time for me. I'd like to ask you, how are you planning to pay the 60000 You said you were planning on getting Sam to pay it for you, but he's penniless. What? Sam doesn't have any savings or even any possessions of much value. And you don't seem rich. So I was wondering how you were going to pay. What? Lol. What are you talking about? He's got that huge house and that awesome sports car. If he's in trouble, he can just sell one. <laughs> Both the house and the car are mine, though. They're not Sam's. So I wouldn't appreciate him trying to sell them. Huh? He's cheated on me four times before now. And every time, he's transferred more property into my name. What? He's had four affairs? Oh, didn't he tell you? Well, I don't suppose he would, would he? You know how you messaged me gloating about your affair with my husband? That's actually the fifth time this has happened. No way, you're lying. He said I was the only one. I've threatened the other girls with lawsuits to make them break up. Or just told them about how he has no money so they lose interest. And sometimes they just come to their senses when they think about how old he is. I mean, seriously. A girl in her 20s getting hit with a five-figure lawsuit? And all she gets out of it is a 50-ish guy with no money? It's really not worth it when you think about it. Hold on a minute. What do you mean he has no money? I told you, you're his fifth mistress. Every time he cheated, he transferred some of his assets to me. The first time, he gave me his savings from when he was single. The second was all his gold and other valuables. The third time, it was his car and our savings since we've been married. And the fourth time, he put the house in my name. But he's still on the hook for all the loans. So, since we're divorced, what's he got left? His salary, minus the car and home loan payments. He's terrible with money, too. So he doesn't even have much in personal savings. No, that can't be true. It is. The savings he gave me for his third mistress was all money I took out of his pay. He hasn't saved a dime on his own since that. The only reason we weren't out on the streets was because I handled his money for him. Wait, then... How am I gonna pay $60,000? I was gonna have Sam pay for it! Yes, that's what I was trying to ask you earlier. Oh, and I won't let you split it up into monthly payments so don't bother asking. You might just have to take out a loan. I honestly don't see how it's worth it to you. $60,000 for a guy who'll be a senior citizen when you're just turning 40? Your kid will be graduating high school and he'll be in a nursing home. Okay, you know what? I've changed my mind. You can have him. Sorry, I have a strict no returns policy. I expect the $60,000 to be wired by no later than this weekend. Good luck! Hey, Clara! Why did you say to Judy? She's been messaging me for about an hour about the money. Oh, she must mean the settlement for your affair. She said she'd pay me $60,000. I guess she was planning on you paying it for her. So I told you that you didn't have any assets, that's all. You what? 
Wait, what do you mean I don't have any assets? Oh, not you two, come on. You gave them all to me as payment for your previous affairs, remember? Sure, I've let you keep using the car and living in this house. But they're mine, not yours. Oh. Oh, good grief, how did I put up with you for so long? Do you know the reason why I agreed to divorce you with just a division of assets? It's because you have nothing left for me to take from you. <laughs> hey, listen, Clara, I've been thinking. Go me talk this over one more time. I have nothing to discuss with you anymore. Our divorce is finalized. You're nothing to me anymore. Shouldn't you be going to get married to Judy right now? Clara, come on! $60,000, that's ridiculous! She said she'd pay it. Signed an agreement and everything. Why? Why is this happening to me? I think you know why. Anyway, I'll leave you to figure out how to come up with the 60000 I need to get ready for the big move. Our daughter and her husband said that I could come and live with them in France. So I decided to sell the house and car and move with them. Huh, France? Wait, her husband? Uh, when did she get married? Oh, yes, you didn't know, did you? She was studying in France around the time of your second affair. When the time came for the wedding, she explicitly refused to invite you. I believe her words were, That man isn't my father. Oh, and your son is about to have a baby. But you didn't know that either, did you? Nope. You only have yourself to blame. Well, hopefully you do better with your child with Judy. Good luck and goodbye. Sam sent me messages periodically after that saying he wants to talk. But I ignored them all and eventually blocked his number. I sold the house and the car right away and stayed at a hotel for a while so I wouldn't have to see him. Sam and Judy had a huge fight over the $60,000 payment to me. Sam said he didn't want to pay it and tried to call off the wedding. So Judy stormed into his company office and exposed their affair. He lost the trust of his employees and even a few large clients. He would have been better off just paying the $60,000. The baby's about to be born. I wonder how they're going to get through this. Not that it's my concern anymore. <laughs> Once I got my affairs in order, I headed over to France and started my new life with my daughter's family. It's difficult starting over in a foreign country, but I'm enjoying every day. I'm not hurting for money, so I think I'll treat myself to a nice dinner. Five or six days a week. <laughs> hey, Mom. How are you? I'm glad I caught you in time. Sorry to bother you so late. Can we talk? It'd only take a minute. Oh, hello, Kathy. Nice evening, huh? What can I do for you? I didn't expect to get line message from you. Very unusual. I hope you're not in any kind of trouble. No, nothing like that. I was just thinking, would you mind accompanying me this Saturday and Sunday? There's somewhere I wanted to take you. It's a surprise. Uh, pardon me? A surprise? I wonder what I did to earn such a surprise. Are you saying you want to go out with me on the weekend? Spend time together? Yes, I guess you can say that. A nice mother and daughter in law outing. It'll be fun. I see. Again, that's really unusual coming from you, Kathy. You never ask me out, even for lunch. Can I ask you something? Have you been in touch with Andy recently? Have you asked him have you asked to him at all? Texted him? You mean Andrew? My son, Andrew. I know you call him Andy. I prefer Andrew. Oh yes, I've been pretty busy recently, so I haven't contacted him in a while. Why do you ask? He's not in some sort of trouble, is he? Well, I've been thinking recently that maybe I want to divorce him. Hang on a minute. Divorce? Are you serious? Why? What happened? Are you guys having martial problems? I didn't expect such a reaction from you, to be honest. I thought you'd be asking me the questions. 
Pardon me? What do you mean? Did I say something out of line? No, no. I guess it's a normal reaction. Just forget what I said. It doesn't matter. I see. So I shouldn't ask why you want to break up with Andrew. At least not now. You just want some advice, perhaps. That's what I wanted to discuss with you over the weekend. I figured we should talk face to face considering the subject matter. Yes, I suppose you're right. There are things you can't re-explain by just texting online. Maybe it would be better to sit down and talk, huh? As sort of compensation for taking the time, I reserved a hotel suite at the beach resort over at Brighton Beach. Really? A Brighton Beach? Wow! That's a pretty nice place. I don't think I've ever been there. You reserved a suite there just so we can talk? No need to get excited. I know a friend that works in management. She got me a really reasonable price. I'll pay for the whole thing, so don't worry. But it just seems sort of extravagant. How about I pay half? P Please, Mom, no need for that. Just do as I say. I'd really appreciate it. This is my treat for being such a wonderful mother-in-law. Anyway, this may be the last time we meet. Oh, uh, right. Thank you for saying that. Okay, then that's that. We meet the hotel on Saturday, about noon. What do you say? It takes about an hour to drive out there. Pretty easy find. I'll send you all the details later on, so be ready and you're set. Any question, just text me. It'll be fun, I assure you. Oh, and one more thing. This is a confidential girl-only thing, so not a word to Andy or your husband. You got that? Just tell them you're meeting with your usual friends or something. All right, Kathy. I'll do as you ask. I'll just pack an overnight bag. A bit unusual, but if you insist, Kathy... Kathy, are you there? Sorry it's a bit late. More traffic than I expected. I'm just about to enter the hotel grounds. What should I do once I park the car? Should I park over here in the east parking area next to the hotel? Looks like it's pretty crowded. Oh, hey, Mom. I never thought you would arrive. I already checked us in, so once you enter, just go past the front desk into the elevator. Third floor. It's a sunshine suite. There are signs there pointing toward the room. Just follow the signs and let yourself in. It's unlocked. Third floor. Sunshine suite. Okay, got it. I don't need to stop off and get a key at the front desk, right? Yeah, just go straight to the room. Beth, I'm sorry about earlier. I hope you're not angry or anything. I thought people would find it sort of strange if we talked too long up there in the hallway. So I thought it'd be better to continue this conversation with line messages. It's been quite some time, hasn't it? It's me, Paula. You seem to be in good health, Aunt Beth. Uh, are you by any chance my niece, that Paula? Yes, that's right. I'm glad you remember me. Really? Oh my god! The last time we talked was like five or six years ago, wasn't it? You just graduated from college, right? Uh, by the way, what did you mean by sorry about earlier? Are you talking about just a few minutes ago? Yes, that's right. Sorry about that. I guess you didn't recognize me. I don't look much like I did when we last met. That young woman that led you to your suite? That was me. That was you? The hotel manager? In the dark suit with hair tied back? That pretty woman? Yes, I married the owner of this place four years ago and started working as a hotel manager. Actually, I'm the co-owner, but I needed to learn the hotel business, so... You might recall I studied hotel management in college. I know. I must look completely different from when you last saw me. I lost a lot of weight since then. I must have lost at least 60 pounds, give or take. I didn't recognize you at all, but it's great to see you. Yes, I remembered you wanted to work in a hotel someday. So you fulfilled your dream. That's great. I'm really sorry to surprise you, Beth. You don't mind if I call you Beth, do you? It's kind of weird calling you Aunt Beth out in public, but there's another reason for that. Call me Beth by all means, but what do you mean? Anyway, you become such a beautiful woman. That uniform makes you look so elegant. It's so nice of you to say that. That aside, why did you bring me to the suite? I thought I was going to the Sunshine Suite. That's where my daughter-in-law made reservations for. She had already checked us in, and I was on my way there when you stopped me and brought me here. What's going on? Was it some sort of mistake? Was the room already taken or something? No, it was no mistake. That friend of yours is your son's wife, Kathy, right? Yes, that's right. Andrew's wife, Kathy. They married two or three years ago. She doesn't work, just a housewife. 
That's what I thought. Why? Do you happen to know her? Is she an acquaintance? She's an old high school classmate. We went to Reston High School together. You know Reston, right? Oh, really? How wonderful! I knew she went there, but... Yeah, well, it's a small town. There are a few junior highs around, but Reston is the only high school, so everyone ends up going there. I had no idea you two went to the same school. Small world, huh? Were you guys friends? No, not really. Beth, I don't want to alarm you or anything, but please... I urge you to escape from the back exit. It leads right into the east parking area. I think I saw you park there earlier. Just leave, right now! Wait, pardon me? The back exit? What are you talking about? Why should I exit through the back and not the front? Did I do something wrong? No, you did nothing wrong. You're the victim here. There's an employee-only stairway down the hall. It'll take you to the first floor and up the back. I saw that you park right by the exit door. So please, hurry. Try not to be seen too much. But I have this appointment with my daughter-in-law. She wants to talk to me about something important. I should at least text her. I can tell you right now that Kathy is not there. She's the problem. Hang on, Paula. What are you saying? I'm saying it's not safe for you to go in there. It's best that you leave. Not safe? What's going on, Paula? Please tell me. I know all this must be bewildering to you. I'm so sorry to frighten you, but please trust me on this. Tell you what, we can drive to the diner down the street and talk there. I'll explain everything, but we need to get out of here right now. Paula, I've known you to be a trustworthy person, and this must be important. I'm going to trust you on this. All right, I'll do as you say. But you make sure you tell me everything. Don't leave anything out, you got that? Don't worry about that. I give the complete lowdown. Hey mom, where are you? I'm getting tired of waiting. It's been quite some time since I texted you. How long does it take to come into the third floor for Pete's sake? Did you stop off in the bathroom or something? Or are you having a drink at the hotel bar for Pete's sake? How much longer are you going to make me wait? Like I said, it's a sunshine suite. Oh, Kathy, I'm so sorry about this. I got a little held up. But I suddenly had an urgent matter at home and I had to return. I had no choice. Hold it one second. Does that mean you're not coming? You skipped out on me? Like I said, there was an emergency at home, and I was called back. I could not ignore it. I'm really sorry about this, Kathy. I was just going to send you a text about it when you beat me to it. Sorry. What? How could you? I made this reservation for you. I mean, I reserved the Sunshine Suite for Pete's sake. This room is hard to get, you know. They're usually fully booked. Uh, you can just show up for a few minutes. So you don't have to stay over or anything. Just show up for a minute. Have a cup of tea and then you can head back. What do you say? I already got in the highway. It's just too much trouble. Already on the highway heading home? Seriously? Does that mean you're almost home? Yes, I'm so sorry. We'll reschedule for another day, so let's talk then. What do you say? This is an emergency. It just can't be helped. I recommend that you have a nice relaxing time there by yourself. Get reinvigorated, have some wine, and we'll talk later. Uh, I don't need to. Just come here to the Sunshine Suite, just for a second. I should concentrate on my driving. My exit is coming up. Don't want to miss it. I'll talk to you later. I'm really sorry about this, Kathy. Uh, Mom, don't cut me off! Paula, are you there? Sorry to be late. Thanks for explaining everything to me earlier, and for rescuing me. I can't thank you enough. I just got off the highway and I'm sitting here at the mall. Uh, uh, thought I would drop you a line to put your mind at ease. Beth, I'm so glad you made it back okay. I took an Uber back to the hotel after we talked. I didn't run to Kathy at the hotel. She didn't check out yet, it seems. It was just pure luck that I happened over here them talking in the lobby about their plans. I hate to imagine what would have happened if I missed that. Saved you the nick of time. I can finally breathe easy. But how about you? Are you okay, Paula? If they find out that it was you who warned me, I don't know what they would do. She might want to get back at you for ruining her plans. They're probably still there. Won't they find out? Don't worry about it. I think everything is fine. Maybe it's because I lost so much weight it's been years since I last saw her. I don't think she would recognize me. As a matter of fact, I walked right by her this morning in the lobby and she looked right at me, but there was no recognition whatsoever in her face. But if it makes you feel any better, my husband's aunt helps me run the place and she'll be handling all the front desk operations today and tomorrow. So I'll be seeing the office and work there. 
I'll keep my head down while they're here just in case. They'll check out tomorrow morning and that will be the end of it. That would make me feel a whole lot better. Well, I just hope it all ends as you say. And another thing, maybe it really doesn't matter, but Kathy had always looked down on me. Always thought I was a loser and would never make anything of myself. She's got this case mentality, especially if you're not well off. She tends to ignore you. Anyway, she would never in the world imagine that I would become the owner of a high-end resort hotel. She probably thinks I would end up working part-time at McDonald's. Oh, not you, Paula. I knew you would succeed someday. You always had the shine in you. Thank you. You should get back home, Beth, and drive carefully. Thanks for everything, Paula. I certainly won't forget this. Mom, pick up! Right this minute! What the hell is this? Did you do this? Is this your doing? Oh, hello, Kathy. We haven't talked the last couple of days. Huh? What's this about? Are you angry at me for some reason? Andy just asked me for a divorce. He just came out and said it, like out of the blue. I asked him why and he told me I was to blame for that resort hotel fiasco last weekend. This is all because you canceled that hotel invitation right at the last minute. If you hadn't walked away, if you would have done what I told you, none of this would have happened. What the hell is going on here? Why don't you go through with the plan? What kind of cock and bull story did you feed him? Oh, so you do know about this so-called hotel fiasco. What the hell are you talking about? Let me stop you right there before you continue, Kathy. I know about all your little schemes that you concocted. The little trap that you had set for me, so quit giving me the runaround. Uh, you know? How do you know? Who told you about it? Is that why you took off so suddenly? You told me to go to that sunshine suite, right? Well, I know that there was going to be a guy in there. A guy that you had hired. He was going to be sitting on the bed half naked. And as I walked in, you were planning on catching him in some kind of romantic rendezvous with this man. You were going to take photos and fabricate a false narrative. Some far-fetched story of infidelity. Then you were going to send those photos to my husband saying you caught me in the act with some young man. Uh, where did you hear? Who told you that? Why would I do that? I have no reason to concoct such an elaborate scheme. I think Andrew was well aware of your infidelity. He knew long ago that you were cheating on him. Wait, what? How could he know? I was super careful. Well, it seems he had hired a private investigator to check you out. Those guys are pretty good at their jobs. He hired a private investigator? Seriously? And there was someone else. Someone that got wind of your fiendish scheme. And was kind enough to inform me in the nick of time. She rescued me from falling into your trap. A trap set by you, Kathy. Who the hell was that? Tell me. Who warned you? Do you really think I would tell you? Where the hell did this get out? I didn't talk to anybody about my plans except with that guy. He wouldn't warn you. Or would he? Maybe you paid him more. Is that it? Is that who told you? You always think you're number one, that you always have the upper hand. But that doesn't seem to be the case at all. What are you talking about? You have your heads up in the cloud, Kathy. People aren't as ignorant as you think. People see right through you. You lost me. I have no idea what you're talking about. I figured you would understand. You always think you're right. There was one question I want answered, though. Can you do that? What is it? Why did you even come up with this preposterous scheme of yours? I mean, what good would it do you? You're my daughter-in-law, but we live separately and our relationship is ordinary. We don't talk much, but there's no real animosity between us. So why? Why well, concoct this elaborate game to trap me, make me out to be some cheating wife? What did I ever do to you, Kathy? Do you hate me so much that you would ruin me? Oh, acting the innocent, are we? You really have no idea, do you? Acting innocent? What are you talking about? What exactly did I do? That afternoon, I invited you to that hotel. You remember, right? I was sitting in the parking area of Midland Mall. I was with my boyfriend. We were, you know, doing what grown adults do. This was way over in the corner, by the trees. Not many cars around. It was a weekday. I looked up and saw you, and you were sitting in your car right across from us, staring at us with those patronizing eyes. Oh, hang on one second. Are you saying I witnessed you with some guy other than your husband? Is that what you're saying? Duh, did you finally figure it out? I figured before you could blab to Andy about my little affair, I would trick you into this little trap, which would lead to divorce. I went to work setting this up right away. So even if you blab to Andy and your husband about seeing me with a guy, how could they believe you, right? I took the initiative. That's what I'm saying. Before everything fell apart, I had to fix it. So this is the so-called fiasco you're talking about, huh? Oh, please, shut the hell up, would you? 
It would have worked like a charm if your little helper hadn't appeared. You know what, Kathy? I haven't been to Midland Mall in years. I mostly shop downtown. Besides, it was a work day. Pardon me? But I saw you there. It was you. And on that deck, I was working all day. How could I be there? No way. You're making that up. Maybe you just stopped in on your way downtown or you were on your break or something. You just forgot you went there. No, I work inside the office all day. I bring my own lunch. I've never left the office during the day. I prefer to stay put. Tires me out at this age. And my office is in the opposite direction from Midland Mall. I was never near that place. I'm not even sure I remember how to get there, to be honest. <laughs> if you don't believe me, you can ask my co-workers. They were with me at the office the whole day. You know Mrs. Carlson from next door, right? You could ask her. You know what, Kathy? This whole fiasco, to borrow your word, seems like a simple case of mistaken identity. Then who the hell was that? That woman in the car? That woman give me that dirty look. Don't ask me. It sure wasn't me. But that can't be. I saw you. It was you. It was definitely you. No, someone that looked like me is more like it. I was nowhere near the mall that day. A total stranger? Is that what you're telling me? That was a total stranger? That possibility is quite high, I must admit. This is not happening. Who the hell was that, for God's sake? Andrew called me and he said he was going to talk to his lawyer and demand a considerable amount for damages. He was furious that you had devised such a vile scheme on his own mother. Is he nuts? What damages? And I don't have any money! And that plan fell! It never went through! But if it had succeeded, I'm sure it would be working the rest of your life paying him off. Why is this happening to me? Oh god, all I did was try to protect my interest. If it was just the cheating, maybe you would have gotten off easy. Oh well, nothing you could do about it now. This is a total nightmare. If I didn't do anything, I would have been better off. Seriously? I always say you shouldn't do things on impulse. It's never a rosy picture in the end. A little late of that, don't you think? Andrew tried talking to Kathy, but they just could not come to an understanding. She was adamant that she did nothing wrong and that the boyfriend was just a one-time fling. Andrew had no other choice but to explain the entire situation to her parents. Her parents flew in from the West Coast the following day. They were furious at what she had done, not only the cheating but also the devious scheme she concocted. Andrew provided all the photos and evidence of her infidelity, including the data the private investigator collected. She had apparently been seeing the guy for over a year, so it was not a one-time thing that she had claimed. They finally persuaded her to apologize and admit her guilt, and eventually she reluctantly agreed to a divorce. Andrew contacted me the other day to inform me that the divorce finally went through. As for compensation, Andrew's lawyer is demanding compensation from both Kathy and her lover. Of course she insisted she had no money to pay him off, so a friend introduced her to a live-in job back east. I hear she's currently working at a fisheries factory on the East Coast. I hear the work is hard and that she's working day and night to pay off her debts. That was the last I heard from her. I hope she manages to get her life back on track, but she's not part of my life anymore. So, why worry?